server live uh, live technical discussion. And uh, yeah, so today we wanted to discuss economics API integration, and that's why we have. By the way, do we have Dvarek? So we have Safi, Santosh, Teodros, Maluk, and some others, and Jennifer, right? So, and I don't see anybody else. However, let's start. So, basically, the tokenomics API integration is quite a complex in the sense that it spans few few things. We started it with designing a smart contract and the business logic based on that. Then we figured out that we need an oracle in order to uh, to 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 make certain decisions and to kind of ingest them back into the smart contract. Then we have Cardano node running on one of our servers. Then, yeah, we have Oracle component and interaction with uh, of Oracle with uh, with the smart contract. Then we have interaction of PMS and uh, like uh, device management service with uh, with basically Cardano node and through that with uh, with a contract. And then we have web application which actually allows users to interact with a smart contract and to to with uh, with an escrow account. And all of this, the way, let's say, it seems now that uh, the context is our machine learning on GPU use case, which has a web app, and we have, uh, which has a certain, a certain sort of uh, integration with, uh, with the wallet. I believe it's typh Typhoon or Typhon, how, how do you pronounce it correctly? So, yeah, so these are the topics. And I believe we can start. So the goal is to figure out what is uh, what is the status of all these aspects and to kind of try to uh, uh, try to kind of consolidate and understand a little bit better how, where we are and how long will it uh, take for us to get to get to the testing of uh, one of our use cases. Most probably it's machine learning on GPU with uh, tokenomics integration on the testnet. So, yeah, I think the way we could start uh, is I could share our uh, business logic that we started to build a smart contract on that. And then, based on that, I think I will ask Safi maybe to update what is the status, how did this. How does this kind of finish, or what kind of uh, changes do we have since we, we last time discussed it? And then we can start from there. What do you think? Certainly. Uh, I think it's a good idea. All right. So let me now try to fight the machine to share the. You see it? You should. All right, so basically, I'm sharing the screen with, uh, with our diagram. Yes, the screen is shared. All right, cool. So, Safi, if you could update what changed since then. Where we are. Yeah, well, it saved my preview for oh, come on. Hello. Mm 
Uh, can you can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. I think I was on push to talk. That's why. Um, yeah. So uh, since then, uh, we have uh, the smart contract, at least from the business logic perspective, is done. Uh, currently, we're integrating SJS into the web app, and uh, uh, we were going to do PyCardano uh, on the DMS. But uh, Dagim informed me that uh, it would they, that we would like to keep the DMS as lightweight as possible. So we're opting out PyCardano and we're using uh, a Go serialization uh, library. That's a, a sort of an open library that someone's made, and we're trying to use that to interact with the smart contract. Uh, that's okay. the update. Yes, and uh, the Oracle so component. Is Actually, we can start from this one. So, do you see now oh, okay. the, the other one? So, this is uh, so it's the kind of scheme that Janaina built on one during one of our um, one of our during one of our uh, Zoom calls. So, we can start from that. Maybe it will be a little bit clearer because here, so we have all the okay. Where is my? We have all our so we have DMS right is here. So, interaction between DMS and and to cut down nodes, then we have Oracle, which is okay, that's another component, but the interaction between Oracle and Cardano node via CLI. Then we have a web app. And again, interaction with the web app and the Cardano node. And here is a smart contract. So we have four components, and we can kind of go one by one. So let's say this is the first one. This is, I think, Oracle, let's name it two. DMS free and then the above. That's kind of not really sure. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Let's call the above free and DMS four. So let's go one by one. Smart contract is basically the functionality that we were laying down here is done. And it's running on the pre 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 pro. Yes, pre we have one on preview, but the latest one is in pre-production. So we use it pre-production. And then uh, this this aspect is also running on our dev server, right? Cardano CLI and Cardano yes. Note and all this thing. So, okay. Yes. Uh, so what about... So now we have... Uh, Two interactions. One is Oracle and DMS. So, in terms of Oracle, what's the station? Or, I mean, we can start with DMS interaction with Cardano, uh, with with uh, with the contract. Right. So uh, that's uh, uh, basically where we have a few design decisions on that. Uh, we were using Python, and but since we want to keep the DMS as lightweight as possible, because the rest of the DMS is written in Go, so we're using Go serialization. Uh, to interact with the smart contracts. Currently, uh, as I believe Jet Barik is what, what he's working on is taking our uh, data types uh, and uh, taking those data types and making it so that those data type get converted into a form that uh, the Cardano node can understand. So that's currently what he's working on. And after that, we'll do the, the smart contract. That's that's the status on the DMS front. So just as uh, I see, we have quite a few community members. So DMS is device management service, which runs on each machine that is on board on Luna. And in order for each machine to be able to sort of sign uh, smart contracts and basically interact with, uh, with, uh, with that, uh, we need the direct interaction between DMS and the Cardano node. But can you maybe, Safi, uh, so, so, so can you decide what exactly, what kind of interaction DMS does with the, with the, with the, with the contract? What, right. what kind of so, calls are needed? So the, 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 the compute providers, um, they're essentially going to have the DMS running on the machine. So uh, let's say if a, cer a certain user has a beta request uh, to the new net platform for uh, a compute job, then that compute first they will fund the smart contract, and 
So that would be the first step. Once it's funded and uh, let's say the compute job has been executed, the compute provider can then, after the deadline, that whatever the deadline may be, uh, uh, after which the compute job is done, they can come back. They can then uh, periodically uh, claim their uh, new net tokens, uh, the NTX token from the smart contract uh, using via the DMS. Uh, so uh, the DMS will then take uh, call the smart contract and extract those funds for them. So that's that's one way. And the second second thing that the DMS will also be doing is monitoring the UTXOs of the smart contract to see if uh, uh, what you so to make it easier and faster for uh, the claim claim uh, functionality to happen. Uh, once a once a computer provider once there is a UTXO in the smart contract that is associated to uh, let's say a compute provider, they can then sort of like stack those UTXOs together and then sort of like do a mass transaction and claim them either one by one or depending on the size of the transaction uh, in chunks. But is it is it DMS that is doing that or is it through web app because uh, so that's a, goes that, through web app. Yeah. So the claim, there's two two ways to do that, right? So the the claim, there would be a claim portal that they could use, uh, that uh, the compute provider could use to claim the uh, new net tokens. The other way could be that the DMS does that. So which way do you suggest? Because we have to choose. Or, or, to or at least at least now, I think it's best that we do the web app. Because that that might uh, claim portal, because that would uh, the DMS would take longer to do. So what exactly DMS is doing? I mean, if web app is yeah. claim it, uh, fund, funding smart contracts also is goes through the web app because this is something that user is doing, not DMS. Well, the UTXOs definitely they need to be curated to make sure that uh, that they, there is a UTXO in the smart contract. So it's like double confirmation on the compute provider end. So that does it, the, the, the compute provider doesn't need to like uh, uh, start a job unless there is a UTXO present in the smart contract. So it seems that the only thing that DMS is doing, well, and please correct if I'm wrong, is that they sign the smart the escrow account. That they uh, will do the job. Yes, uh, but they don't necessarily need to explicitly sign it. They just need to be sure that there is a UTXO there. They, so, they, they can look we they can look at the UTXO uh, because we can forward the UTXO through the Oracle against the compute provider. If that if that makes uh, sense. why would we do that? So why uh, would we, we use Oracle? Because Oracle, I mean the, at least the initial idea that Oracle is a component which decides on uh, whether the result is, is correct or not. Oh so sorry, uh, not the DMS, the Oracle would be caching the UTXOs. Uh, so for, for faster access so that we don't have to query the smart contract every single time. So the, the, the in, in the design, uh, at least uh, that one thing that we decided was to keep uh, sort of like a cache in the Oracle to uh, so that once there's a withdraw request, we the, we don't have to query the smart contract every single time. It would be faster if we have a sort of like a database. Okay. Uh, the problem with an Oracle, which is not exactly a problem, but Oracle is a centralized component of Monad. Uh, and so uh, basically if we pipe everything through centralized I mean the more we pipe through centralized components the more we centralize the platform which is right. kind of like it actually doesn't look good unless we have a good reason to do that or unless it's not possible otherwise it's it's a slight optimization. I don't think we necessarily need to do that, but uh, it sort of speeds if we cache. Uh, usually, if we cache the, I I believe so. If we cache the UTXOs, at least the at least the IDs of the UTXOs and have them associated with the uh, addresses, I think it'd be easier to um, 
sort of like you know to to, to fetch those those uh, specific ones. Does that make sense? It does make sense, but I would uh, kind of try to oppose optimization before we see. I mean, not to optimize things before we see how they work in a decentralized way. So, because right. otherwise we, we, we just centralize things without uh, explicitly uh, considering that. By the way, anybody could tell me how to switch off the notifications? You can enable streamer mode. Pardon? You can enable streamer mode. Ah, really? How do I do that? It's hiding somewhere in the settings. Um, uh, it's in the user settings and then app settings has a, a stream mode section. Okay, I think uh, I think I will stay like this for now because otherwise I will spend too much time trying to figure it out. Uh, yeah, so basically, so in terms of uh, token, uh, the, the API, do we have all those calls as explained in the, in the APIs, uh, tokenomics API, or how do you, what is the status there? Uh, so on the, on the DMS? Basically, no, because so we have calls to to tokenomics API via Oracle, via DevApp, via DMS, and that's it. Yes, so, that's, that's uh, and so if we have a list this on tokenomics APIs, then we can go there and sort of figure it out uh, through which I mean to to kind of uh, put uh, comments on each call. How do we solve it? Whether it goes for Oracle, whether it goes directly to DMS, and what are the pluses and minuses for each? So uh, uh, here. Well, the the Oracle, at least the way I conceptualize it, was that we have four, uh, from the smart contracts, we have uh, four calls. Uh, at, least, at least the to tokens that it generates are, uh, are the fund token, the withdraw, the refund, and the distribute one. And then that to, to generate those tokens, the Oracle needs to know the status of the compute job. Oh. Yeah, so this yeah. was uh, Oracle, right? This is Oracle. Uh, in, the, in the business logic. And actually, Oracle had free, at least initially. Oh, yeah, yes, the fun one that we. Uh, unsuccessful, which is error, and free is. Yes. Is partial. Yes. All right. Now, I believe these guys create transaction, transaction prepared. Now. So creation of transaction. Oh, transaction, yeah. transaction creation, transaction prepared metadata, etc. And so on and so forth. This was everything off chain, if I remember correctly. Like in, and you were creating. So this stuff was being created in DMS or by. Uh, uh, please remind. Sorry, I could not catch your question. Could you? Um... I mean, so all these. Uh, sort of uh, aspects of, of business logic were created where? I mean, where they are, it where, where do they happen? Oh, the, these happen off-chain. They don't happen uh, on the DMS. They happen uh, in the web app. Okay, so this is web app. Yes. Uh, the off-chain deploy one, uh, I'm not sure what we meant by this. Uh, I don't remember what you mean. Uh, this is deployment of the, of the workflow itself. Oh, okay. Which doesn't happen through the smart contract. When the smart contract is signed, yes, deposit and signed, 
then we do the, the, the off-chain deploy via DMS. It's kind of off-chain in, in terms of uh, with relation to the smart contract. Uh, then, okay, these are all stuff which is uh, based on uh, whatever Luna protocol system and so on so forth. And here we come to the to the Oracle. Well, Khaled, no, that's not normal. You should have a permission to speak. So, uh, I believe you have to press something or maybe ask Jennifer to, to, to give a permission if you don't have it. Yes, I can have a look to see. Yeah, thanks. So, based on that, so let's say this is something that we finished. So, based on that, anything? Anything changed from this uh, from this kind of logic? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, what what's changed is uh, so the problem w that I've had with the smart contract is that uh, there you there's there's two ways of validating the uh, when when we fund the fund the escrow. There's two ways of we can't validate the funding uh, in just one call. So there needs to be a UTXO put in and then only then a redeemer can be attached to the UTXO if there if it already exists. We can't like do that in the same call. So what's changed is that we would need one call to let's say start uh the escrow and another call to fund it. So two two separate transactions there which isn't very nice. So there's there's two one or one way is this. Uh, the other two ways that I've seen is that some people uh, that that are do what they're doing is that they have a treasury contract and they have an escrow contract. The treasury contract handles the funding and all checks checks the funding through through uh, the datum, and then the output of the treasury contract becomes the input to the escrow contract. That's one way. Uh, the other way is payment channels. Which then we would add uh, unnecessary, I believe. Uh, well, we what happens is basically every time someone makes an escrow is 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 a new contract uh, for each uh, for each trans uh, for e each uh, job there would be a new contract, which doesn't seem uh, uh, like like a good idea. So the the two two ways uh, are that that seem plausible is once we we have two separate calls for. Uh, Starting an escrow and then funding it. Uh, you could also close it if you decide not to fund it. The other thing is to have a treasury contract where you put in your funds and then that treasury contract uh, uh, output becomes the input to the escrow contract. Uh, so that that's two ways I've uh, I had seen people do this, and I think uh, uh, for now we we should just go with the uh, uh, making two two separate transaction ones. So let me understand. But do we have a right now? We have one single contract for the whole Nunet. For Nunet, we have one single contract, and then yes, based on that contract, people open escrow accounts in order to kind of fund and redeem uh, funds uh, ITX for specific jobs that they construct. Yes. So now, what you are saying is that there needs to be some kind of treasury. There, there could be uh, like we both we have the option to do that, but it's not. Um, I have, so there's some technical problems with uh, with just uh, with ver with just the verification of the funding. But since the Oracle mm -hmm. will issue the uh, verification token, we can assume that the Oracle verifies the inputs. Uh, that's one way we can just oh just get rid of the funding stuff too because then if someone wants to mal maliciously fund uh, UTXO, it'll just get uh, uh, it'll just get stuck in the smart contract. Okay, so or if uh, they do it, if they manually do it and they do it wrong, then the the funds will get stuck in the UTXO. Oh, sorry, in the smart contract. 
So uh, once again, I think that the, the, it seems that we have a kind of uh, if Oracle does some kind of verification, it's again it, all the transactions go through the central component. It's not preferable. Yes. Uh, so, but it may be needed if if needed because Oracle as a component, Oracle is also sort of. For now, we are building it on Lunet is building the Oracle to take to take care of of of, of sort of uh, estimating whether compute jobs are acceptable or not. But in principle, it's, it's decentralizable. Uh, however, yeah, if if we do not use Oracle for that, so can you repeat what's the solution? Yeah, so the solution would be either having a treasury contract. Uh, that holds all uh, that holds the users' funds, uh, and then the the other solution is having two two separate calls to fund the escrow. So, so what's the problem of having two separate calls? Just uh, just uh, you know you pay double gas fees that way. Aha. Uh, because treasury means we have to have treasury where it's it's not that every. Like single treasury contract to fund all the transactions? Uh, yes, it could it could work that way. Uh, because then the what what could happen is is uh, the treasury contract could then uh, issue a uh, that's an air access token um, or the same principle that we have with the oracle. Uh, the oracle could ex issue an access token for someone to withdraw from the uh, the, the treasury contract. And that they, they could only withdraw from the escrow contract. Uh, by the way, uh, so do we have any commenting abilities here for the for the for the community listening to comment somewhere or to kind of share ideas, Jennifer? Yes, there is on the top um, right hand side. You'll see a little message icon, so you can click on that if any messages come through. I think I see. Ah, cool. So I believe that we'll not have much bandwidth to answer them now, but we'll sort of take it into account. So if anybody has any ideas, please share. Okay, so let's let's proceed then. Uh, well, so at least from my from the way I, I, yeah, I kind of understand this is, I would first of all go with uh, with uh, with the proper way, which means double, I mean two transactions, right. and then, and then I would like, uh, then I would try to, uh, well, let me rethink. So there are basically. Either we have two transactions, or we have we have uh, we have some kind of treasury, which doesn't mean doesn't really make sense to me because then we have one treasury for the, all the transactions. So uh, in, no, please go on. Uh, I mean, the, the idea is that the transactions, when when a user by that app or whatever. Uh, it decides to do the like uh, submit the job to the to the to Nunet. Then Nunet finds the compute provider, and then they enter into contract, and the user puts NTX in a in a in a in a, in a, in a contract, and then compute provider sort of uh, uh, promises to do the job based on that contract. And where the treasury comes in, I I I, I kind of doesn't fit. so so uh, so the. Uh... So Gimbal Labs has this this setup uh, essentially. So they have this uh, bug bounty program kind of uh, dApp that they're working on. And uh, the, someone when someone creates a bounty, they put uh, they uh, what they do is they fund their treasury and the the basically the output of that uh, well the UTXO uh, in the treasury becomes the input to the escrow contract. So. Uh, the, how do I explain this? Uh, let's say, uh, okay, so the datum lives inside of the treasury contract, the data for the, for, for in our case, the compute job, but it would be the address of the user, the compute provider, the price, the deadline, all of that. 
would exist in the escrow contract. And then uh, uh, along with this, uh, basically through the, to either through this or through off-chain code, we could say, okay, so now this job is done, a uh, compute provider can come and redeem it. Uh, that uh, that would be a, through a separate validator. I think this is getting a bit too confusing uh, that way. So there are two separate steps of validation happening. Uh, one is where, where we're just validating the funds coming in. And the second steps of validation is when we want to take the money out. And the first step of validation is a separate contract. The second validation step is the escrow contract. So the treasury contract is making sure that the input co that's coming in is correct. And the escrow one is making sure that when it's being taken out, it's ta being taken out uh, safely or correctly. Uh, that's one way. The uh, the third way that uh, maybe payment channels could, uh, we could figure out how to get payment channels to work too. Uh, maybe that could probably be a much better way to approach this. But this isn't, um, but we, we can, for now, we can definitely do the two two separate transactions once until we figure out the best way to like uh, do this. Yeah. So uh, at least at least because we are having uh, first this business logic, what we're doing, and then we are figuring out how we do it. And it seems that uh, it gets kind of mixed up. Uh, and then, yeah, maybe I I at least from my perspective, it seems to be better to start with uh, with a clear business logic and then figuring out how we do it rather than the other way around. So yeah, right. it yeah. seems that what you said, okay, we have two verifications, which makes sense. We, we verify first those funds are to the escrow account. Escrow is sort of, um, is, is, is uh, constructed correctly and the funds come correctly there. And then when the compute job is done, yeah, there is another contract to figure out whether the compute job is was done correctly and whether the funds are, where, where the funds are going to to which side, which is kind of job of Oracle. All right. So I kind of wonder. In this in this scheme, where is it? Because uh, the escrow, we were preparing it somewhere here. Contract prepares for signing. Right. So here we find the escrow, and then uh, that uh, it's it's this uh, this part, the funding part. That's uh, that's basically could be problematic because uh, of the uh, because we want to make sure that the funds that are coming in are come in correctly. Uh, but if they come through the, let's say the web app, we can guarantee that it's correct. But if someone tries to do them manually, uh, for whatever reason, maybe a malicious reason, maybe they're just messing around with it, uh, those UTXOs could get stuck uh, in the contract, which is which is a, a, an unlikely case uh, that could happen in in a normal normal use case. Uh, but those those UTXOs will get stuck in the smart contract with no way to like get, getting them out. Yeah. So uh, then uh, what we can do, and that seems to be the correct way to do it, so we say, okay, the correct way of doing this is through web app. Now web apps will be supplied by the solution providers, basically, which in our case is uh, known as in the machine learning case. And that is the correct way. So if, if, if we can guarantee that uh, if we do this through web app, then it's not getting stuck, then it's fine. And when yes. we have the solution, then we can kind of see what can go wrong and then sort of, especially if that's malicious user of, 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 of the platform, then, yeah. okay, what can we do? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can do to, to prevent malicious usage of the platform, but one of the, if funds get stuck, that's kind of automatic prevention. Uh, okay. So then we do this for web app, and the Oracle is, is figure, figuring out the, on this, uh, how funds go out. Yes. Anybody has, has uh, comments? Khaled, Idbarek, Santosh. OK. 
Okay. So uh, let's jump back here. So then, what is what is the status of interaction of PebApp in order right. to kind of uh, make this happen? We're we're integrating MessJS with. Uh, yes, we're integrating MessJS, which has a lot of built-in features to interact with the smart contract. Uh, I am me and Khalid were working on it. Uh, we were running into a bit of a uh, issue with the, the installation, but once that's done, uh, I believe that it won't take too long to uh, start interacting with the smart contract because they have all the all the code already uh, written, like as a starter pack. So there's no need to like for us to if we were to go down the serialization library path, we would have to write a lot of code from scratch. But we just need to fix a few uh, installation bugs, and yeah, then it, it should be good to go. So serialization uh, is it is it also so you you mentioned that we have serialization class here, which kind of already was decided, right? Right. Uh, then. And what is serialization here? Oh, so serialization is basically making uh, uh, the it's basically how uh, the Cardano node will understand the data types, like uh, compiling it down to a C bore string. Uh, so that's sort of uh, built in into MessJS. So okay, you can so you, use, you don't do uh, that manually here. Yeah, we don't have to uh, do that through serialization lib because it, it, one, it lacks documentation. Uh, and uh, two, it's a bit, uh, you know, you you have to do a lot of R and D to like get it to work. But MessJS seems seems reasonably uh, seems more reasonable because they they uh, they have they have good documentation and quite a few examples to interact with smart contracts. But you will do it here. Uh, yes. Uh, well, um, DMS. We, we need to query the. We may need to query the smart contract on DMS, but I'm thinking it might be unnecessary because of if we're not going to do the uh, if we're not going to cache the uh, the UTXOs on the Oracle side, I don't see the point in doing that. Bit. There's there is a Go serialization installed, I believe, uh, in the CLI when uh, Hal was doing the uh, was doing the uh, wallet generation. Uh, part uh, that the, the library I believe is is there. Yeah. All right, but I, I don't think it's the same library. Uh, if that's what you're saying. So which one were you using? Uh, I'm using uh, Cardano Serializer. Yeah, the the one the, that's in Go, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just in not, JavaScript. Not, it's not, the official, not, not the official yeah. Cardano Go. Yeah, yeah, because that that doesn't that doesn't have the bindings that we need. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to. I mean, we have another thing that web app actually it is running on the well, it's, it's not uh, here. It's running on provide uh, solution provider computer, which will have the MS two installed. And here we can do the interaction with uh, with the smart contract either web uh, app to DMS and DMS to smart contract or directly. We could we could do the DMS to if that makes sense. I mean, we have to design. But but, but then the uh, with mesh GAS, uh, yeah. can't we just directly uh, interact with the smart contract? Isn't this the whole point? Yes, uh, I think this it's easier to do it with the wallet. Yeah. So yeah, I I have no no, no objections. I just pointing it out. Uh, but but then we just open the we have kind of three interactions with the Cardano node, as I said in the beginning from DMS, Oracle, and the Yeah. So in terms of time. Which uh, ah okay we didn't cover the Oracle interaction with Cardano CLI and I mean all the Cardano and the contract how things are going there. 
Yeah, so uh, uh, Vitalik is currently was working on the, the MS file I'm taking. I'm taking the Oracle. I will try to take the Oracle uh, talk and do it myself. Uh, so that uh, that that part is uh, I've, I have code in Haskell that generates the keys. And I'm, what I'm working on is integrating that with the smart contract. So this will be done on Monday. Uh, so we can start testing the smart contract with the Oracle on Monday. Uh, where, where, so yeah, where does Haskell come in? So it's a, it's just a, I already ha had it for testing, but Jitparik was working on it in Python. Uh, but I already had had some some written work for at least for testing uh, with the smart contract because the smart yeah. contract is in Haskell here. Yeah, I understand the smart contract is Haskell, but we do not really run any off chain uh, off chain components in uh, Haskell. We have Go, we have uh, and we have Python. Actually, we don't even have had JavaScript yet. I mean, we have in Wallet, but uh, in the web app. So where yeah, so, does it come? So I, so the the interaction between smart contract and Oracle, that's the part that I wanna I'm finishing today, and then on Monday I will uh, then do it in Python. The same thing, just put, porting over it to Python. Okay. Yeah. That that's uh, if that makes sense, because because uh, I already have it uh, had it in Haskell a long time ago. I was just wait, waiting for uh, Yudbai to finish on, but on hold. So I'm taking on the task myself to okay. finish. All right. So, I mean, the, the thing is, uh, it seems to me, I mean, just from very, very broad perspective. So we have a bunch of components and they seem to come together. But there are a few things to finish. What I understood is both on DMS, on Oracle, you said it's already almost finished, uh, on the app, on DMS, and then uh, and then when can we put everything together and start, start sort of uh, yeah, so, um, well, uh, the web app, I believe we can get it done in a week's time, uh, maximum, like in the worst case scenario, a week. Uh, that's probably because the library that we're using is in beta, so it still might have bugs, but the, 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 the testing I did on their playground seems like it works fine with smart contracts. So once we uh, figure out the kinks in it, we will probably be able to be able to do it in about a week, I think. The Oracle, I can get it to work Monday, uh, I believe. Uh, Monday, Monday before the next daily, I think I can get it to work uh, with Python, that is, and uh, have it tested using Haskell today, because that's what I'm working on today. Uh, and the DMS, uh, I think we will probably need to talk about the TMS and maybe we don't even need serialization on it. Um, I'm figuring out what is Monday, just to... Oh, and then next week, Monday. Yeah, yeah, January 9. Yes. So the DMS is... Uh, yeah, okay, Jan, what? Uh, just a pre I mean, preliminary... Or, or is it done already if, if you don't need anything, uh, sort of if you don't need serialization on DMS? I, I, I can't remember why we were doing serialization on it right now. Well, uh, uh, it was for uh, curing UTXOs, but I don't think it's necessary. I can remember, at least from what we talked last time, that you had the option either to use PyCardano or serialization. Yes. And since DMS works on Go, there's no point of using PyCardano because then you will have to install uh, like Python somewhere, which yeah. kind of makes it just just not the way we want to design. That was the decision for serialization. But if you don't need that in order to do the calls and you can kind of route calls from somewhere else, then yeah, then it's not needed. Right. So we could probably just add a feature for compute providers in the web app? Uh, well, not really, because compute providers do not have that app. Compute providers that, are just yeah. computers. That's the that's why we were doing DMS. But the reason we wanted to do the claim portal was when uh, the owners of the compute providers wanted to claim the NTX tokens. 
Yes, and that could be done, I believe, uh, yeah, through the lab, uh, yeah, through the lab, but then we will have to design a different web app. Right. Or, or at least add, add another page for, for this one, because this will be different people or different entities, users and computer providers. So therefore, they will have to authenticate themselves differently. Maybe we can use the same app. Uh, but so, okay, so then we have kind of two, two options. Either we, dis we design another app, claim portal, or we do it via serialization here. So which way would you prefer? Uh, which way would I, think, you I think we could verify the compute providers by their address, by their wallet address. But we would still, we would need to, to store their addresses somewhere. We would need to know, or we could one way we could well, yeah, yeah. We would uh, uh, wherever the metadata was. I uh, forgot uh, where we stored data about the platform. Um, uh, well, depends what data. Just the, yeah, the HT. Uh, so we need to store the addresses somewhere. Uh, uh, which addresses? The wallet addresses. Uh, right. So the, I the wallet addresses will have on the HT, I believe. Yes. Then uh, we could just uh, query the DHT and see if uh, the wallet that's trying to log in as a uh, compute provider is in the DHT or not. Yeah, but this will yes. be only public addresses, of course. So you will not be able to verify yes. that that's correct. I mean, anybody will be able to get. Well, that. no. We we can definitely uh, have a signature, have them sign a a string and check the signature of the string to make sure that the public addresses match up. Okay, so the, do we need a claim portal or don't we need a claim portal if we go there? We can just use the same web app and have a different section for claiming. So okay, I call it claim portal. So still we we need to build this sort of uh, uh, yes uh, web app. Okay. So, which is another thing which I think we didn't start even, right? In order to make right, it. Yes. And here we don't need serialization in this case, right? Yes, we don't. So, this is basically done, we can say. For uh, yes. testing purposes. Okay, so let's see it done. All right. So we need uh, we need to design this part. Kalat, any any com comments from your side on this one? Because the map is, is your department. Well, actually, um, um, we have had a call earlier, and if we already agreed on all of this, me and Safi, so. Ah, I see. So I missed it. Yeah. All right. And uh, so, uh, does it does it fit also to what Safi said regarding uh, starting testing, putting everything together in end of next week? Sorry, could you come again, please? Uh, does it sort of fit uh, regarding this claim portal or page? Yes. Does it fit to this uh, plan to to start testing next week? Yes, uh, at least the uh, functionality part would be the same as if we were funding. If we can fund it, then we can withdraw it. Like uh, both of those calls would be shared. All right. Okay. Ah, so the, the kind of uh, last question from my side would be: What about uh, the, the the whole Cardano node and using for testing our own infrastructure? Like the next yeah. uh, next shell that you were installing yesterday and stuff like this. So, uh, yes, uh, that's done. I've installed it. Uh, I've also ran the unit tests on using it. It works fine. Uh, what we what the next thing would be to do is is uh, integrate the CI CD with it. Uh, yeah, exactly. And how will how do you think we can do that? Uh, well, uh, we have the dev server and everything. So just uh, uh, we have the uh, well. The the way that it works right now is we we take the GitHub repo and we just uh, there's a uh, 
what what Kaval has an interactive repo. So what we can do is we can then uh, run the repo and see the whether or not the test passes using the repo. Uh, there's also uh, we can run all of the tests all at once to see which one passes and which one which one don't. Uh, so there's there's uh, I've seen uh, I've seen a couple of projects have the uh, CI/CD pipeline integrated. We can use them as an inspiration to to uh, do this. Right. Uh, on GitHub so, though, then I haven't seen on GitLab yet. Well, it should just. I mean, I don't see the difference. It should work yeah. because we can we can have the same interaction. And then we will see all the tests. So basically, all the tests that you are doing now, we can run in that way, and we can see all the all the results, right? So does that also fit into the next week, or not really? Um, no, I, I don't think I could probably because that would take me a little bit more time because I haven't done a CI/CD pipeline before, so it might take. Ah, me so I time. think I think I think regarding that. Um, all I is sort of uh, GitLab CI/CD expert, yeah. so you can just just push that as I mean ask him, okay. or or make 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 like a comment with with uh, in, in in the issue with uh, referencing him, and then he could just help to to program it. What what he needs to have is test some tests or let's say bash scripts that you are running on your side so that you can integrate into GitLab CI/CD. And okay. using the, the, the whatever the, all this infrastructure that you built on the server. So okay. yeah, you, uh, uh, you just need to give him an input, and he will uh, construct it. Okay. Uh, and just one note regarding tokenomics API. So the the overall idea is that we will be testing like CI/CD pipeline will be running against the API. So that we will be testing calls which are defined in the uh, economics API. So for that, it's kind of important to have all those calls to the Cardano node, which is which is basically the economics API kind of to, to to describe them whether they go from, the, from DNS. I mean, that's another question through, through through which component which component exposes which calls, but. Uh, yeah, so do we need to update or the tokenomics API? Yes, I do. The the documentation you mean that we wrote. Yeah, so as a async, async API file yes. plus like documentation, etc. And yes, then we can, with the test, so because when we put this also test to the community, we'll design, uh, we'll design test, uh, how do we call it? Test protocol for testing certain things. So that uh, first of all, we test through GitLab CI, you test uh, internally, then we kind of test it with the community. But before testing with the community, we'll do the test protocol. And at that point, we basically need to have API described so and release the kind of test API so that we know what exactly are calls. Okay. Uh, the async API is, I think, Pretty outdated. I'll update it after uh, after the daily. I think. All right. Okay, and then we can use this. Basically, I mean, the idea is that we use the Sync API to discuss on each call if needed as a reference, and also use between us and use it to with, uh, for discussion with uh, with the community when it comes to that. All right. So we have, yes, go on, please. Uh, can you repeat my look? I didn't hear anything. Well, I guess something that you said something, but I didn't understand. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, now again. We're moving in three minutes till uh, the end of the session. Yes, so uh, anybody has, has some kind of final thoughts or maybe questions that we may sort of address later? Well, if not, then I would 
close the session and I would suggest then to work further based on what we talked. So mostly probably with Safi Khaled. Yeah. And hopefully based on the on the update of tokenomics API, based on all these new things that we discussed. All right. All right. Thanks a lot then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.